And guys, there's no fences here. Would you say that they're at least as smart as a dog, or do you think they're that level of intelligence? I think they're pretty close to dog level. Uh, we have evidence that they understand what day of the week it is. Are we allowed to let you out? Uh, please, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everyone? Ken in here. I'm here with John Brug, and I'm going to follow him. And uh, we also have Ed uh, Ballou from Aquascape. We've got a really cool, uh, uh, cool experience here. Now, I've been inside this. Uh, I've been inside this enclosure before sure. uh, with Greg LaPera at Croc School. During Croc School, that's, yeah, a, that's it was, a very cool time. It, it is awesome. I'm really excited because we're going to do a couple videos with John. Today we're at the Alligator Farm, which happens to be one of my favorite places in Florida to visit when you come down, you want to go on vacation, but you love reptiles. This is the place. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennet. This week's special shout out goes to Laura Wilcox. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. The, the farm's been here for many years. Yeah, since 1893. Yeah. So that's not backwards, not 1983, but 1893. 1893. Over 120 years we've been here doing what we do. It started with a, a, a guy who said, uh, maybe people would like to see alligators, maybe they'll pay me for it. He just captured wild alligators that existed right here on Anastasia State, uh, Anastasia Island. That's incredible. And, and guys, we are, there's no fences here. Um, <laughs> why, why don't you tell some of the, the people that maybe don't experience crocodilians often, why aren't these animals attacking us three right sure. now? So there's a number of factors here. All of these alligators uh, have different backgrounds. So some of them were born in captivity, so they're very used to us. Some of them were a nuisance alligators out of the wild. They were bothering somebody and rather than kill them, they were brought here. Uh, but they all end up in this kind of atmosphere where we're hoping they get along and we've worked very diligently to train them. So there's almost 40 alligators in here and most of them know their their own name so we if we call an animal by name uh, and ask it to approach us then it it may do that if it's in the mood if it thinks it's gonna get food uh, but if not if we're not calling them or we're not waving food around then they kind of get the idea oh you know that guy's not gonna feed us and the last time I approached him when I wasn't asked he kind of poked me a little bit so it was <laughs> unpleasant it wasn't the thing that I was hoping to <laughs> could get. you would you say that they're at least as smart as a dog or do you think they're that level of intelligence I think they're pretty close to dog level okay. so I think they understand their name clearly I think that they understand uh, feeding cues uh, we have evidence that they understand what day of the week it is uh, and I can Get tell you, and, and, and the way we figured that out is we used to only, we used to feed over here six days a week and on Sundays we'd feed over here. And Jim Darlington will tell you that on Sunday morning before he ever got the food ready or anything, the alligators were lined up on this side of the So, that, you know, which would make sense, right? This yeah. is an animal that also has to understand seasons. It has to understand whether cold weather's coming. There's some kind of, they have to understand yeah, all of these things in a time schedule. So those crocs are lined up ready for the wildebeest. They don't live there all year waiting for wildebeest. Right. They know when the wildebeest are coming. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people when they move to Florida with their poodle, if you're gonna walk your dog, you gotta do that. Don't walk it down by the water, first of all. But if you got a path that takes you near the water, don't do it at the same time every day. Because once you get in that pattern, an alligator who's far out in the lake will realize, he'll, he doesn't have a watch, but he'll look at the time and go, oh, that poodle comes down here every day at seven and he'll get a little closer the next morning and a little closer the next morning and then he'll just be waiting there and looking like a stump and, and Fluffy's gone. That's it, man. You know, isn't there also some place in South Africa where the Niles kind of wait for a dam to release so they can catch the fish as they well? Catch Have you heard the of this? Fish. Yeah, so there's a, a lot of crocodilians, even some alligators in places where they get in this water flow will sit with just their mouth open waiting for a fish to go by and they're so quick at snapping That's that, awesome. that if it even brushes and they grab it out of the water. Well, we got Crocodile Ed Dundee here. Uh, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel for the last week, I'm still geeked out that he's wearing this hat. I am gonna make a present. Uh, this is a very big Indiana Jones fan. Uh, we'll get into that later, I'm sure. But uh, I do wanna make a gift to John as well. Um, but anyhow, guys, um, the reason Ed's hanging out with us, as you know, he has done some work in my home for Slinky. Uh, I'm on my fourth ecosystem pond from Aquascape. But what's really cool is you guys, uh, the Gator Farm, and uh, well, actually, you yourself, we're gonna go visit your place here in another video. Sure. But 
there's been some collaboration between the Gator Farm here in St. Augustine and Aquascape. And what needs to happen with this lagoon? You said uh, this lagoon has been here for how long? Well, I don't know the exact year that it was built, but it's been here since at least the 30s. Okay. And, wow. and uh, you know, I, as I told you guys earlier, we've been doing alligators for 100 years, yeah. but we're still learning stuff. Yeah. And one of the factors is this pool was designed with very straight edges, which makes it easier to clean, but doesn't make it so easy for a 600 pound alligator to get out of. And so what we need to do is design something in which the alligators can kind of swim out on the shallow land, a slope or a, a mm -hmm. small kind a tidal pool like thing so that they can get in there they actually crocs love to have their belly in the water and their back in the sun and then when they decide to get out they just stand up and walk out they don't have to struggle to pull their gotcha. whole body weight out. and not only that you're looking to improve water quality here as well correct yeah so uh ed you can talk a little bit about the yeah, water quality you know, you know so when we start talking about aquatic ecosystems there's a lot of different things that i'm always thinking about right away first is what is it used for obviously so we have all these animals in here but i'm also looking at the watershed I'm looking at the entire system sure. because all of that stuff is feeding it's dropping nutrients in and this is exactly what happens yeah. in nature right I mean there is no such thing as an isolated system on our planet everything is open so it's very it's very uh, uh, it flows with the seasons we're gonna get heavy precipitation leaves are gonna drop inside of here so we want to manage all that stuff we want to control all those nutrients that are building up we saw some of the stuff that you're doing in the back over there skimming off all the leaves. I think that's an incredible thing because that leaf debris over time is going to decompose. Those nutrients are going to be released back right. into the water, clouds the water, adds particulate, but it also adds dissolved nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, iron, all these different micronutrients which actually feed algal growth, plankton, and stuff like that. So what we want to do is try to control that stuff a little bit. I think we're, we're you're on the right path right now. I mean, the water quality looks good. So what we want to do is take it to that next level. Right. So by pre-filtering that stuff off, but then sending it into uh, a constructed wetland filter. These constructed wetland filters are designed to detoxify the water. We're basically creating a home for microorganisms. Nature's perfect, right? Well, that's Nature right. is 100% perfect. Waste from one thing is food for another. So what we need to do is just create the home for all those little microorganisms to actually work symbiotically together to break down all that stuff. And if we can achieve those couple of different things with the right circulation, everything's going to work and yeah. we could clear all and so stuff from up. your <laughs> standpoint you're always trying to make the uh, visitors experience even more uh, you know beneficial or more enjoyable sure and so to be able to see these animals better would be key right? clear water yep. for sure disease free water okay you know? mm -hmm. i mean alligators are tough they don't get very many diseases but uh keeping clean water helps avoid any of it. right mm -hmm. exactly yep. well i'll tell you what man this is really cool to be just hanging out oh, in here man. this is my fa yes. i mentioned that it's my favorite park uh and it's really cool to see such a cool collaborative effort uh how much that each and every one of these animals in here guys gets veterinary care they are looked after you said they have names yeah absolutely. yeah these these animals have names they're they're completely cared for so uh it's really testament to the to your keepers i know jim darlington and uh lauren gurney turn around um, jim's right there is jim right there there he is give a wave jim what's up there he is man all right he's a lot of fun this guy uh he knows crocodiles intimately so anyhow uh, I just want to say thanks. It's always a pleasure to come here, man. I appreciate your time. We're going to do another video with John, but kind of at, we're going to get behind behind the scenes. We're going to go to his crib. We're going to see what Aquascape created for him and the different kind of tweak that John brought to it, which I think you guys will find interesting. Uh, that's in another video coming up soon. Thank you, gentlemen, both. Uh, and that's it. We're going to get out of here before. <laughs> Man, nothing's going to happen. We'll be all right. We'll see you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And come visit the Gator Farm. We'll put a link in the description. It's a beautiful place in beautiful, historic St. Augustine. Say goodbye to this one.